Welcome to the very beginning of the Bulldog Educator Podcast. You're with your host, Kirsten Wilson, and I just want to let you know a little bit about me. I have been an educator. I first started as an educator um, a long time ago, right out of college, and for nine years, I was in education. I pursued my master's degree, and I was a prin- assistant principal in a middle school which was sixth through eighth grade. During that time as assistant principal, I also became a mom. And after some soul searching and really trying to decide what was best, I decided to take a break from education to be a full-time mom. I was a full-time mom for five years. And during that time, I had a son as well. And when he was three and my daughter was ready to start kindergarten, my daughter and I, we went back to school together. Since I've returned to education, I've been in education for 12 more years, and I am currently in my 22nd year in education. I've always been called to education passionately, um, and uh, it's been a really important part of who I am. Um, When people say, what's your hobby? It's kind of hard for me to separate my love and my passion for education from another activity um, because it's so much a part of who I am. I am also the mom of two amazing teenagers. I have an upcoming senior who's 17 years old, and she is mega talented. And of course, I'm saying that because I'm her mom, but I think other people would agree with me, specifically in the performing arts. Um, She's hoping to pursue um, a career in theater. Um, And so we're looking forward to that journey with her. I also am the mom of a sophomore, almost 15-year-old boy, and he would want me to say almost because he's almost ready to get his learner's permit for driving. And um, he is mega smart as well. He's super analytical and he's my tech wizard. So as you can tell, I have two extremely different learners in my house. I'm also the wife of um, Eric um, and we are coming up on 26 years of marriage. And I'm also the mom of three dogs, two cats, and reluctantly one pet snake. And just to be clear, out of all of those um, animals in our family, Cosmo, my French bulldog, whom this podcast is named after, is my muse. And you can read more about why Cosmo is my muse in my blog. So in my journey as an educator, I have taught everything from first to 12th grade. Um, To be honest, I kind of avoided kindergarten. It scared me a little bit. And um, I really wasn't real keen um, back in the day when I started teaching about bulletin boards, and that was a major focus in kindergarten was bulletin boards. So I tried to avoid that and dodge that bullet. Um, I have a mad respect for kindergarten teachers, always have, um, and it's truly one of the things that um, I don't think I ever would say that I was really gifted to do. I can teach all ages um, from learners uh, that are 18 months to 99 nine years old, but I, for some reason, struggle with those five and six-year-olds. I'm not sure why. Um, I also have taught a leadership class that I designed for high school students. I've worked in Gifted and Talented. Um, I've also worked with ESL students um, in elementary all subjects. Specifically, um, in third grade, I focused on math Um, development, which really changed my viewpoint on teaching math. And then uh, language arts and social studies in fifth grade. Um, I also taught that for a time. Um, When I was a stay-at-home mom, I continued to be teaching and I taught, um, believe it or not, music for 18-month-olds to five years old. Now, that doesn't require a lot of music talent as much as it requires movement. Um, You just play a lot of fun songs, teach them some songs they like to sing, and you just move a lot. Um, And that would be a successful music class for 18-month-olds to five-year-olds. Um, I also dabbled a little bit in exercise instruction, and some of my favorite uh, students when I taught um, an exercise class were my um, golden sneaker or my seniors, um, and I really developed some really sweet friendships when I was teaching that exercise class. Um, I've also 
uh, been an assistant principal, like I said before, in middle school, six through eighth. And um, the five years that I was in elementary school was actually when I returned to education. And in that time, I discovered Twitter. I implemented a genius hour and started a blog, which really brought me onto the path that I am now. Um, after those five years of a classroom teacher, I moved into the position that they called instructional technology specialist. And during those two years, I was a um, integration technology coach. And I, I was also responsible for hosting our district Twitter chat. I also helped implement ePortfolios with both students and teachers. And it was a really exciting time because in that same time, that's when I was introduced to some of the influencers that are still impacting me as an educator today. And in future podcasts, I'll talk to you about some of who those influencers were. Um, I moved from that to a a middle school curriculum coach, uh, which was uh, very fulfilling. That was a time that I helped uh, teachers um, face challenges um, within their classroom, working with students of all learning levels, and really finding ways to not only engage students, but empower them. And then from there, I moved to um, an assistant principal at an elementary Um, level, which was K through five. And I learned so much from those teachers and those students and um, just in a way that even though I taught elementary before, it really just grew me as an educator. Um, During that time, my husband had a job transfer and I had the opportunity um, to apply for a director of curriculum instruction for the state that I currently work in in their um, state virtual online program. And I was fortunate enough that they saw something in me and I was able to move into that position. And I am there currently. Um, This is a a great opportunity for me. This is where I've been working to create impactful professional learning communities through development of collective efficacy. Um, During this time, I recognized the need for clarity for my teachers um, and developed the instructional model for online approach for our organization. And I've recently been helping co-host with a wonderful educator out of Alaska um, in the Twitter chat called Hashtag Quality for All. In the process of implementing this blended model for teacher growth between um, And then also in this process, I have implemented a blended model for teacher growth um, between the Charlotte Danielson model and the National Standards of Quality of Online Standards. And that will be something that I'll talk about a little bit more in future podcasts. Um, But those are just a little bit things, a few things that have been going on with me. I just want you guys to know um, a little bit about me and my heart. Um, one of the main things that's really important to me and sometimes is uh, unknown that working in an online environment does not mean that I um, that I overlook the need for relationships. In fact, it's quite different from that. Um, I tell my teachers all the time that before anything else that you do, connect, connect, connect with your students. Um, That working on relationships is key. And one of the things that I have learned as I have supported my teachers in what we call a beautiful constraint, and you'll hear me use that phrase from time to time, is that if I want my teachers to connect with my students and develop relationships, then I must do the same. So I work really hard at connecting with my teachers um, so that they in turn can see from my example um, of how they can connect with their students. Um, In the upcoming podcast, um, I'll be sharing, in fact, um, this next podcast, I'll be sharing the core beliefs of the Bulldog Educator, and I'm doing kind of a top 10, um, or they are my 10 core beliefs. We're going to also share, like I had stated before, our current and past influencers that have molded the Bulldog Educator. This will include authors. It will include people that I've met through social media. It will include people in my daily life. And it will also include some influences that um, are spiritual in nature or or faith-based. 
So just to give you guys a little picture of what's coming up, our future podcasts are going to focus on the matters of connection and relationships, leadership. And when I talk about leadership, I'm not just talking about people in administrative leadership or the title of leadership, but how all learners have the capacity to lead no matter what they are doing or who they are. If they're um, students or they're teachers, even community, how they impact education and what they can do to lead. We'll also talk about vulnerability and how that's carried out in an online environment. And we'll discuss the topics of change. Um, which we've had a lot of change lately in this world of education. And so there'll be a lot of topics related to that. We'll also talk about innovation. Um, and personally, you know, where I sit with innovation and self-care. Um, something that I have really taken a hold of lately is the importance of not only my own self-care, but the self-care of educators in general and just people in general. and self-care for our students. Um, and of course, universal to any classroom. Um, these things will be universal to any classroom, teacher or educator, regardless of the environment. But I will want you to be aware that I am operating from a perspective of an online environment. While um, 19 years of my experiences, 19 to 20 years of my experiences come from what we call a brick and mortar environment or a physical environment. The last two years, um, I have been in an online environment. And as I further step into that, that is where my perspective will mainly focus. So I just want to leave you with that, and I am so appreciative to all of you that have taken a chance on me. I also want to ask that you extend some grace as I learn this process with podcasting, because I am learning as I go. And I just hope that you'll continue to follow me, and that you'll hear something that is beneficial to you, and that we can all learn together. And so thank you so much, and this is the Bulldog Educator signing off.